Where did you hear about the news? I actually heard it from a client, like literally straight off. Well, it was like the day after it happened, like my first client of the day was like, oh, did you hear what happened at the bridge? And I hadn't heard. And I usually uh, drive over the bridge every single day yeah. to come here, but like that one day I was staying at my girlfriend's, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know. Like, didn't even know that anything happened. It was literally like, yeah, he told me, and I was like, oh. When I'm thinking like trying to put yourself in the headspace of that guy, like trying to do what he was doing, and you're like, that's just the most conspicuous way to try and do what he was doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so many places on the river. If you're gonna chuck it in, like, why are you doing it from a suspension bridge? Like, the most populated area. I don't know. It was weird. It was. He's from London, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So. And again, I just it's that thought process of like. Why have you come up here? And then specifically the suspension bridge. It's like, I don't know, it feels quite like invasive in a weird way because I don't know, it's a nice community around here and it, yeah. It's... Are you annoyed about it? <laughs> it would be very Clifton to be annoyed about it. Does it feel real to you? No, not at all. No, not at all. It's really weird, yeah. How do you feel just talking about it, even with, with us, just, you know? We're talking, we're talking about the situation and we, we, there's a bit of speculation about what's going on. I mean, you're talking about you're sort of aware of what's happening, um, but still, we are able to have this back and forth. I feel a bit numb to it. It feels yeah. like, it feels really bad to say, but it kind of, I'm not, in, not indifferent because it is something that I am quite like, it is interesting, but like, I don't, I feel so disconnected from like the actual, yeah, like the, the tragedy of the situation and like the shock of it, I just feel kind of like, eh. Which is a really weird reaction to feel, but like that's just how I feel, yeah. Um, it's just kind of, it's sad in a way, isn't it? Because, you know, it is like something really messed up happened and we're all just kind of like, eh. Not that the whole world should stop, but it's. Have you noticed a difference in terms of the customers? Not necessarily in terms of the customers, but I think the vibe around, like there's obviously, you know, you hear a siren and you're like, oh, it's probably to do with it, or something like that. And there's been definitely a lot more, because like I said, my boyfriend lives at the end of the street. There's been like police all around there. And yeah, it just puts a bit of a weird sense in the air, doesn't it? Yeah, well, but you, you said that your boyfriend heard about something. Yeah, that, um, so apparently the guy, I mean, a bit of said, I don't know if this is absolutely true, obviously, but, he was meant to be in one of the pubs in Clifton um, when they were watching the football. My boyfriend was meant to be in there at the same time um, and said he, they came out of the pub and asked one of his mates who did end up going if he wanted him to help him with the suitcases. And the guy was like, oh, no, don't worry about it. So, yeah, my boyfriend could have been in a situation where he was the one lifting those suitcases into the back of a taxi. Oh, yeah, which would have been a lot. So, wait, did you get the taxi from from, from outside the pub, I think, um, and then round there because he said the suitcases were so heavy that he weighed, weighed them down with rocks or something to chuck them off the bridge. Ended up being so heavy um, that they had to get them in a taxi to get them up there. Yeah. God. Yeah. You know, people have been talking a lot about it recently. A lot, a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Because there's also like even now you hear sirens and you think, oh, is that to do with it. We tried to cross the bridge yesterday and there was still police. Of both sides of it, and, and so it's definitely not over. Not and, died down. and the speculation that's that's sort of surrounding it. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh, has uh, has there been anything that you've heard that you've been like, not sure if that's true? I mean, I think to some extent, I'm like, how true is what you told me that you know he was sitting watching the football? Because to me, that's just like absolutely nuts. Like, why would you not like get it over and done with, and then you know then sit and watch the football after? But Apparently some people's brains just don't work right, do they? He's a football fan. <laughs> was there a difference or a noticeable difference on how business was after? Um, the only thing was, we get quite a lot of tourists around here, especially because of the bridge. And I think they were coming and asking a lot of questions. They couldn't have access to the bridge and everyone was asking a lot of questions. I don't think business necessarily changed, but definitely the atmosphere changed a lot. And have you heard anything extra, you know, you being sort of down here and where you're situated? Um, I think, yeah, just kind of getting updates. There was lots of police around for like the week after. Um, some of them like popped in for a coffee and we were like, oh, what's going on? Um, obviously the bridge was shut for a while. Um, but I don't think we've had any extra information than everyone else has on line. We've kind of just been figuring out as sort of the general public has as well. Yeah, I feel like the bridge is almost like tainted almost now, everyone's a bit like freaked out to go on it, but. How are you boys feeling? Good. Yeah. We get, we, we, whenever we stop, people come to us, which is kind of fun. Everyone <laughs> seems to be up to talk about it, right? Well, not everyone. Like we've had, I think 
among the people you've approached, there's like a 50% hit right. Yeah. But 50% of the other were the, the shop owners, really. So uh, I, I guess it makes sense that they don't want to get involved. Tracks, so, right? Especially yeah, yeah. they're also working. So. So I just knew that just human remains had been found on the bridge. No, yeah. um, that was it really, that was all we knew to start with. Um, and that there was a man looking very suspicious around there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was all I knew from the day, first day. I think a lot of people were scared. People were, you know, questioning like, oh, can I go out at night? People didn't really want to go towards the bridge. People didn't want to be in the area. Um, but I think it was more confusion than anything. Yeah. Like, Everyone was still talking about it, but yeah, mostly just confused. Yeah, yeah it's definitely it. a strange vibe, you know, because it's all very up in the air yeah. and you, like, you don't really know what to tell people either. Yeah. Because obviously a lot of people were asking us if we knew anything about it. And yeah, it was definitely a, an odd <laughs> vibe. Obviously with, there was um, a kid missing Jack, so there's all the speculation of maybe it's this kid that's gone missing. So yeah. everyone was really like, ah. Um, and then it came to light that actually it was two, um, two men from London, yeah. two queer men, I believe. Um, yeah, it turned into a homophobic attack. There's pictures of, obviously, because he used to live with them, as far as I'm aware. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So there's information about he, uh, he was staying at their place right. and they found uh, sort of human remains at I that heard address. I there was some at the house as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it sort of sounds really gruesome. So what do you know about the story so far? Because I know there's a lot of things, sort of speculation that is going around. I try not to speculate. I, I just sort of know what I've heard on the news. We, we live all in Bristol and we've been hearing a lot about uh, what you know, other people have been saying and there's been like some speculation around what's going on. And we, I was quite curious about um, what sort of actual people's feelings are, because I know people are quite scared. Um, where, where are you from? From are Southville. You? Southville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you, you travelled down for? Yeah. for I'm up here for a coffee and lunch. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I know. And then it's a quick taxi ride back home. Yeah. You know, yeah, about what, 25 minutes away from here. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then, uh, you coming down to sort of Clifton today? Do you, are you? Do you feel? Was that on ever on your mind? The suitcase? Um, not really. No, no, no not at all. No, no. I, I, I didn't really find, you know, get my head around it, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, of why somebody would travel... From London. From London. Yeah. And especially to go to the bridge, mm. you know, that's... Um, I didn't know they had uh, security on 24-7 up there. I know they've tightened it up a lot because, obviously, of the, you know, people going up there for obvious reasons. Um, they've done a lot of security up there, you know, so I should imagine the guy didn't know that. You know, I found it very strange, you know, that you would bring two suitcases from London. It's a long I, way I, to go. It's a long way to go, and, you know, London's far bigger than Bristol. Yeah. So I should imagine, you know, perhaps if you wanted to dispose of something, you know, there's far more opportunity in London. I, yeah. I, I, don't know, I haven't got a clue. Yeah, it's not something you think it's about. It's not something day. I really think about. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. when, when I did find out about it, I thought, wow, you know, I mean, that's really weird. With the news, do you think Clifton's going to be different because of it? I don't think so. I, I think it's such an anomaly that, um, you know, it's, it's a one-off, I, I hope, anyway. You know, I don't think it'll affect life in general, I think, you know. I mean, it's quite a shocking thing to happen near where you live, but I think overall it's, it's not affected us too much. It's kind of a freak incident. I don't think it wasn't, you know, a member of the community or anything like that. So have you been have you been speculating at all since? Um, I find that very distasteful, so yeah. I've not been doing that. You still see me? Okay, Anya, let's talk. Let's talk. What's up? Hey, stop it. Let's talk. I mean, I do think there's something interesting about the speculation that people are having. I think that's been the common theme right now. Not that 
that much. They they don't speculate enough. No, but 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 enough. in in your mind, you, you know, maybe we want to get conspiracy theories. But I think there is an idea that people are somewhat enjoying it. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people are definitely finding it fun. Now, uh, I guess that maybe also if you want to get this spe speculation out of them, it probably you can point out, you can say, you have your thoughts, have you thought your theory behind it, what's your theory behind it, why you think this might have happened. Sometimes if it doesn't come out, you might be able to push that out, though, don't know whether that fits with you as time. Uh, okay, I want to think that that is working there, fair enough. Uh, do I look at the camera or do I do? I'd rather look at you if that's okay. No, Thank no, you very much. <laughs> yeah, it just seems something obscure and really dark, very off the vibe of Bristol. That's something that since I've been living in Bristol, I've seen crime, I've seen a lot of stabbing, uh, but nothing as crazy as human remains chopped in a suitcase. That is like weird. It's definitely not the vibe of the town. It's not something, not very often you see in the news that something's happening in Clifton like this is a one-off, obviously. Do you feel like it's safe now? As safe as it was before. I'm curious on your thoughts actually, just on how, um, what you're noticing with people today and what they're talking about today, so far. Uh, besides that one man we interviewed at the park, most of the people we have interviewed around our age, or they look around our age. And I do think that they are not the sort of people that they are very inclined to have their own assumption of, oh, this has happened. Surely it's to do with that trafficking. Surely no, they don't seem that sort of people. They seem like, oh, well, this has happened. This is interesting. I wonder what's going on. And they just wait for more news to come out. Mm. Uh, probably they might have their own opinion, but they just, they've been reserved about it. That might be the case. I heard about it about a week or so ago, I think, when the, the story broke. Yeah. Um, I, first, I didn't really take that much notice because I'm a Bristolian and there's, all, there's, there's a bit of history of incidents around the bridge, uh, lots of suicides. Um, and there's a, a, a case a few years back when, when a woman went missing. Uh, and uh, so occasions done a bridge incident. I, get, I think the first thing I've, I thought was it's probably a gang gangster thing. Yeah. You but, think, do you think that now? But I've, well, I've heard differently now. Yeah. I've be, but I've, I need to catch up on the story. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's now been regarded as a hate crime. Yes. Uh, and it sounds terrible, but it was because um, it was a Colombian name was mentioned. Yeah, he, and, he's Colombian, and the two victims were. Uh, a guy in his, got facts here, um, guy in uh, 62 and, and another one who's 71 who are part of the LGBTQ community yeah. they, previously in a relationship. No, yeah, I knew it was a gay couple. I didn't know any more than that. Uh, so yeah, it's horrifying really. I think I just cycled over the bridge and, and I was, that was the first thing I thought about was that and then you got, so it's quite weird that I've ended up like talking about it. Time lapses and um, doesn't quite, it seems a little bit surreal sometimes. It's yeah. like, um, I mean, it's still like really early days. And uh, do you, do you, does the story feel real to you now? You know, yeah. with a little bit more information. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's horrific, really, that, um, that a couple could an innocent couple could be victims of so much hate. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's hard to comprehend that. <laughs> well, we just heard that the bridge was closed uh, for two days. We thought, why has it been closed? Well, we didn't know. But then somebody emailed me and said, uh, somebody had found some bodies on, on the bridge, yeah. in a suitcase. But I didn't go up and look at it. I think my husband did, but I didn't. Hmm. <laughs> how, how are you feeling about it today? Today? Yeah. Well, it's something you probably never forget. When I go across it, I always say, I wonder where those, sausage, those suitcases were. And um, basically that. Yeah, did you I do think about it every day. I think it's just the most ghastly thing I've ever heard. 
notice a difference sort of how it how Clifton's been in the past week? Or? No. 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 Not at all. It's been lovely weather and people out having good times. So, well, did you feel at all sort of shocked or scared? There were some reports in the news of some residents feeling a bit scared to go go out and a bit cautious. Well, I, wa I was a bit actually. I, I did think, I wonder if he's around here, you know, and uh, I was I was a bit, uh, you know, like, Go on. No, I just feel like I see your intent, um, I think. But, yeah, I struggle to see what this adds to anything, broadly. Um, people are going to say, oh, Clifton feels a little bit less safe. Or people say he'll feel the same. And then you'll be like, cool, that's great. I struggle to see where this is different to what the news have been doing for the past week. Okay. Of asking people around Clifton how they feel about it. Do you so, trust the news? I trust the news. I trust the facts that are in the news. I usually don't trust the way headlines are presented. I prefer, when there's a headline that feels a little bit too attention grabby, or when someone shares a headline, like a screenshot of a headline on their story or whatever, it just makes me want to check that that's actually what the article is saying. Because it's something that you get a lot these days where the article seems to say a thing and then you read a little bit and you're like, oh, that's, you've, you've blown this completely out of proportion. <laughs> that's not at all what's being said. But they have to do this because otherwise they'll lose what attention they have left from the public to social media news people. Yeah, I work around the corner and like a few of my um, colleagues, they were like around when it happened as well. Like oh. two hours after it happened or like an hour before. So are you, are you guys good? Uh, let's start there then. What did you hear from your colleagues? Um, well, I think they were working that night because I work in a bar. And um, I think they just said they heard the news like two hours after they left, you know, finished the shift. Yeah. And it was just like really um, like disconcerting, I guess, having that happen right there. And they were working literally around the corner. So bit scary. Yeah, I heard about it on BBC News, like our friend that we were with at the time. We were in Clevedon just down the road and to get to Clevedon we had to sort of normally go sort of near the bridge, but the bridge was obviously shut. So I just sort of assumed someone's jumped from it because normally it wouldn't shut unless it was like a major incident like that. But obviously that like, you never like assume there's bodies being dumped in suitcases. It just feels like something out of a like a TV show. Yeah. You know, I watch like, a lot of crime <laughs> series and yeah. it is like that. Especially summer like in Clifton that you just wouldn't expect it because it's a very, obviously, it's a very affluent neighbourhood. It's mm. very, yeah, quiet normally and safe. Yeah. There was a reason for why he was living with them or if it was something went wrong and he had to do something that like, he didn't want to do, you know? And why Bristol? Like, has mm. he ever been there before? Like, why would you mm. get all the way to Clifton from yeah. London? You know, yeah, yeah. it's still a big city. It's not really yeah. nowhere to dump a body. Yeah. Maybe there's some ties here. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. This is where he is last seen. But like a tourist. You yeah. kind of like a tourist, a morbid tourist. A morbid tourist. He ran down um, Burwall Road. Why are we filming here? I, they, they said they searched Lay Woods. They said there was a big search here and I think either way, I don't think anyone's going to know whereabouts in Laywoods it would be, you know. Laywoods is such a big area, it's trees. I mean, we, we literally just came to the entrance and went and did it. I was conscious through the night um, of a bit of helicopter noise. Yeah. But that happens quite a bit here. Um, obviously, this is a, a rather sad and tragic location for people who make certain life or end of life choices. So it's something that happens fairly regularly. But then in the morning, I, I was walking in the opposite direction from the bridge, just literally down this road. And I received a message saying that the bridge was going to be closed all day. Uh, for a police incident, the news outlets began to explain that there was some rather horrific evidence of uh, 
tragic experience that took place late on the, the Wednesday night, I realized that it was considerably more macabre and uh, disgusting than um, what normally happens. I have to say that, that I thought the, the response from the suspension bridge team and the police authorities was, was really good for the people that live around here. And I, I never felt a sense of uh, fear or foreboding. Um, I, I was more concerned that, that, that somebody would have the capability to do what was being reported. Why would somebody take a journey with that tragic evidence and put themselves at risk, whether on public transport or whatever? And then the fact that other people, members of the public who were out that night, bumped into them and had to sort of help them with their awful <laughs> suitcase contents across the, the zebra crossing. That was just, you know, another level of appalling fact. It's just almost ludicrous to think that uh, an individual with those things in luggage could contemplate getting away with anything in a, in a public area on a midweek night, knowing it's this is a very popular social area with lots of bars, cafes, restaurants. So people are, are going to be out at 11 o'clock still. You know, it's, it's not as though it's a rural community. This is you know, right in the heart of a gorgeous part of Bristol. That seems to be the kind of the, the consensus that everyone seems to have is like the guy was incompetent. He was trying to dispose of a couple of bodies and he thought doing it here would be smart. That's one idea. I kind of think that the bridge had some importance to either him or his victims. Why did you think about this? Tonight? Because I think I've met stupid people in my life, but this is a lot of stupid. If, if, if this is the thing, if, he, if it was incompetence, that's a lot of incompetence. Um, and it just seems silly to a point where that makes it harder to believe. Whereas if the intention was always to do it there because there's a meaning, that makes it make a bit more sense, I think. Are you glad of what you heard today? I'm glad not many people are losing sleep over it. Um, I'm glad broadly this was shocking for people, but they're over it, mostly. Um, and some of the only really true crime stuff that I like focuses on the victims and because they, they you know, to honor them and what they went through and to talk about their lives, to make, make it matter a little bit more. Um, you don't like true crime that much? No, I really don't. I really struggle with it. I get the morbid fascination thing. I just don't like it. And that's fine. It's just not for me. How do you feel about making a true crime thing? <laughs>